These youth are some of the Karen people of Burma in South Asia. Just as the First Nations are the original people of Canada, the Karen are the first native people of Burma. This is the story of how the Karen came to faith and how they came to Canada. The Karen people always believed in the Creator, God, Thebwamu. They had no Bible, and yet for thousands and thousands of years they carried the stories of Adam and Eve and of the flood. The Karen came to Burma from the west through Mongolia. They traveled across the land of death, the great desert, the Gobi. There was a great confusion of many migrating peoples. So the Karen tied bracelets to themselves so they would always know who was Karen. Because the Karen passed safely through the desert, they came to believe that dark spirits had protected them and the bracelets reminded them of their bondage to the dark spirits. So they made offerings to demons. Under the banyan tree, they would make sacrifices to the dark things. So the bracelets became bonds. Like handcuffs, they bound the current to demons. It was a constant reminder to them that the dark masters owned them. Pusatu and Pipasang were the first people to live in Burma. They were Karen. Pusatu took off his shirt, tied it to his fishing pole as their flag to claim the green land, Burma, for the Karen people. The Burmese came to Burma much later from India. The Karen gave the Burmese the name Paya, which means allies and friends. But it was not long before the Burmese grew in number and became something other than allies. Many Karen were pushed inland, farther and farther into the forests and the mountains. But over the next 2,000 years, the Karen people never forgot the legend of the Golden Book. The legend says that long ago, the Creator, God, made three brothers. The oldest one was Karen, the middle brother was black, the youngest brother was white. To each, God gave a Golden Book. This Golden Book held the teachings of God. Then the three brothers parted and went to three parts of the world. But one day the Karen brother was clearing the forest for fields. He put the book on a tree stump and went further into the forest to clear more land. He got busy. Busy with more work, busy with more land, busy getting richer. Only after he had burned that land did he remember the golden book, but it was too late. It had been destroyed by the fire. The father of all Karen wept. His brothers were much too far away now to share their golden books with him and his family. Then the Karen brother saw a chicken scratching at the base of the burned tree stump, and the chicken scratched out this symbol. And from this chicken scratch, the Karen made their written language. And Thebwamu, the creator god, gave the Pwakinya a prophecy. Gold and silver book. God's own book. The book that disappeared will once again appear from the white brother. This legend was told from generation to generation to generation, and the prophecy also warned them to trust only the white brother who came by water on white wings. Adoniram Judson, a Baptist, arrived in Burma in 1802 to bring the gospel to the Burmese. Judson bought out of slavery a man named Kothafu and hired him to be a servant. Kothafu was a gambler, a thief, and a bandit. Kothafu was also a murderer. He had killed over 30 people. But Kothafu was also a Karen. Even though his own people had disowned him, Kothafu knew the legend of the Golden Book. One day Judson took out his big pulpit Bible, with gold edging the pages and gold trimming the cover. In one moment, Kothafu realized that this was the golden book of the words of God and that Judson must be the white brother. Kothafu breathed in the words and the spirit of God and he breathed them out the same to his people. Kothafu took the white brother and the golden book to the forest and to the mountains and when the Karen villagers saw that the prophecy had come true, they cut the bracelets from their wrists and they threw their bonds into the fire. Kothafu personally led over 1,000 of his people to Christ. 
They soon breathed in the spirit and the words of Jesus, and they breathed the same out to other Karen and even to other people groups in Burma. Canadian Baptists have been working with the Karen for 168 years, in Burma, then in refugee camps in Thailand, and now in Canada. For in our time today, the Burmese military dictatorship have driven the Karen, like Canada's aboriginals, off their land and to the point of disease and starvation. They have driven the Karen across the mountains into Thailand. But now there is another legend growing. How the Karen wandered in the wilderness like the Hebrews and lived in tents for many years in Thailand. But one day they came to a land of promise. They took flight on giant birds with silver wings. They came to a land of white and black and brown, brothers and sisters. They came to a land of peace. They came to Canada. Hello, my name is Mimi. I am Karen, originally from Burma. My parents experienced civil war, human rights violation, ethnic cleansing, and many more. Therefore, my parents fled to Thailand and became refugee. I was born in refugee camp and grew up in refugee camp. I came to Canada in 2007 when I was 12 years old. When I came to Canada, everything was new to me. I have experienced this new weather, food, <laughs> culture, people, and many more. However, I thank God for his love, care, and provision. I thank God for bringing me into this great nation. On top of everything, I thank God for being one of his children and his greatest gift of salvation. May God bless us all. There are hundreds of Korean refugee youth in Ontario. We are very blessed to be here with you all. We reach out our hands to you, and we ask you right now to reach out your hands to us, will you? 